So that is going to be one of the winners out of the decline of the ANC in KZN. And I think the other one is going to be the EFF, uh, which seems particularly in KZN to be doing quite well. What is going on in KwaZulu-Natal and how will political trends in that province impact on national politics, both for the country as well as within the ruling African National Congress? This was a question that we at the Centre for Risk Analysis considered in a recent client webinar. What follows is a short extract from this webinar. Enjoy. So, John, do you want to come in there? You know, what, what do you think of the ANC's chances? I'd also like you perhaps to comment on developments in KwaZulu-Natal because the Seems to be quite a lot going on there, and you were also on a on a road trip uh, to KZN recently, and maybe you want to share some of your insights from that trip. So I think, firstly, on the question of the ANC, um, my sense is that it is running out of electoral assets. So a party needs a number of things in order to do well in elections, and money is one of those things. Credibility is another of those things. Uh, attractive leadership that attracts votes is one more thing. And all of those things are in decline. And that is, for us, a reason why we see this decline that we are observing in the polls being buttressed by factors outside of the polls. Um, so we think, you know, there's quite a number of reasons why we're seeing the, the drop, and we think it's going to be sustained, because there are no strong reasons to push against that. Um, in a sense, maybe we've got two assets that the ANC still holds. The one, I think, would be the very strong brand and the uh, the emotional connection to the brand that many people, many voters feel. And the second thing would be the ability to mobilize public funds in support of the party. Um, and that is where the role of the finance minister and the governor of the Reserve Bank, the Cesar Kanyaho, becomes so interesting. Because if they were party men through and through, they should be opening the taps. Uh, and maybe they will next year, we'll see. But for now, they're really holding the line. The Reserve Bank governor uh, has been raising rates. He's not gone for an easy uh, monetary policy. And the finance minister, for his part, uh, as Chris alluded to, has been quite pragmatic, quite realistic in uh, pushing back against the desires to spend more state money, which would have helped buttress the ANC. Yeah, and you know, I think also, um, if you consider that... Uh, my earlier point, you know, there was this kind of uh, wait and see approach with Mr. Ramaphosa, but what's happened since those last elections? Well, we've had the COVID crisis, we've had a deepening of load shedding uh, quite dramatically. I mean, load shedding has been around for a while, but it's really now systemic and, and almost on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, also the July 2021 riots. I mean, that was a huge conflagration. Right? So those are pretty significant events that have characterized this administration it's going to change the dynamic considerably. It seems to me that within KZN, the ANC is blamed for that. Um, firstly, because it seemed to be internal faction fighting that spilled over into broader society and triggered the conflagration uh, with the urging and support of some members of, of the ANC, uh, supporters of former President Jacob Zuma, as well as the fact that the state wasn't able to stop in and bring the violence under control. It was unable to protect citizens and was unable to protect the property of citizens. And for both these reasons, I think there's been a quite strong rupture within KZN um, in trust in the state and trust in the administration and also trust within uh, trust in the, the party, the ANC itself. What we heard from conversations with people in KZN is that they are, I think, traumatized, would not be too strong a word to use, and concerned that, uh, you know, will the violence return? And will it return if the ANC weakens significantly? So should the ANC lose, uh, is, is South Africa going to be safe? And is KZN going to be safe? And there's this concern that as the state becomes weaker, the party becomes weaker. Other elements move into that power vacuum, um, some of which you know might, might do a good job of filling the power vacuum, like residents associations or business, business organizations trying to catch uh, the, the, the falling and the declining standards of the state. But on the other hand, you are going to have criminal elements as well that you know will simply use the opportunity to extort uh, uh, money out of poor South Africans and law-abiding South Africans. And that is quite a concerning thing. And that worries ordinary, ordinary people in KZN uh, quite a bit. The 
beneficiaries of that decline in trust in the ANC, I think on the one hand is the IFP, which has suffered uh, a bit of a, 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 an existence in the shadows, I think, for the past decade or decade and a half, and which is probably now beginning to revitalize and, and rediscover its roots and its identity, its purpose, uh, and probably in many ways its opposition to the ANC. I think within the IFP, there's a, a kind of dual soul, the one part that does align with the ANC and sees itself as you know being uh, almost the same, just with a, with a Zulu tinge, and the other part, which is uh, more nationalist, more, more locally based, that doesn't necessarily see the ANC as a good thing. So that is going to be one of the winners out of the decline of the ANC in KZN, and I think the other one is going to be the EFF. Uh, which seems particularly in KZN to be doing quite well. All right. Uh, yeah, I think a lot to consider there. I think another key consideration is ANC internal dynamics within KZN. It seems that the party is the most divided in that province. There are no Zulu speakers in the top six of the ANC currently. There's a, a kind of a general sentiment that uh, Zulus have been marginalized within the party. And if you recall, during the Zuma years, uh, Mr. Zuma was able to really deliver large tranches of, of electoral support, both within the party and at the national electoral level. Uh, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Uh, all right. Well, Marius, you want to come in and respond there? Yeah, I just want to uh, point out there was quite an um, interesting development in coalition when opposition politics this week with reference to KwaZulu Natal, where the IFP and the DA uh, said they're going to work together to. Uh, asked the ANC in a ward in uh, Etiquini. Uh, so it was a ward that so the ANC won uh, and lost his local gun election in Ukmas in the south of the municipality. Uh, with the ANC candidates only won with 30 odd percent of the votes. Opposition votes were split between the DA, the IFP, an independent and a couple of other smaller parties. But the DA has said now they're not going to stand a candidate in that ward and then encouraging their supporters to vote for the IFP candidate. Uh, so I think that's uh, quite an interesting development. It also comes after there were talks last week between uh, the, a lot, sorry, not last week, last month, between the IFP and the DA. And they've come out, I mean, they've explicitly said it's to ask the ANC in uh, KwaZulu Natal. And I think John Spot on the IFP is really starting to surge in. Uh, KZN, especially Southern KZN, which traditionally been weak. There was a by-election a couple of uh, weeks ago uh, in, uh, I think, around about Port Shepston, so in the Southern Province, where the IFP won a, a by-election, uh, got about 50-odd percent of the votes. In last year's local government election, only got about 2 or 3 percent of the votes. So obviously there's something uh, happening there, and it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely something to look out for. Uh, but just on the point uh, of um, the by-election in Unkmaas that I just mentioned, the reason that the by-election has to be held there is because the sitting ward councillor, an ANC guy, as I said, was murdered by two policemen. So it's, you know, it's something that, uh, we've known for a while now that KZN has this problem with political killings. Uh, from what I've been, I've uh, been looking, there doesn't seem to be uh, a motive hasn't been reported on why this uh, councillor was uh, murdered. Unfortunately, his name escapes me at the moment. Otherwise, I'd mention it to you guys. But yeah, it's, uh, I think this is part of the broader ANC dynamics plus uh, KZN, which is, you know, it's always had kind of different dynamics from the rest of the country. I mean, it's in the Western Cape have always been a bit different from the rest of South Africa. So it's just something to uh, watch watch out for. And also, uh, uh, John Spot and I think with the point of there being two different uh, IFPs. I think there's one IFP that's, you know, wants to work to ask the ANC and another one that would be, uh, you know, would be happy to work with the ANC on a lot of his goals and probably wouldn't be too opposed to things such as expropriation without compensation and so on. Thanks for watching. Let's hand over to you, our audience. How do you think regional political dynamics in KwaZulu-Natal will affect the rest of the country? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section. Also, a quick note that this will be the penultimate video for the year on the CRA channel. Tomorrow will be our last video before we take a break in December. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care. Thank you.